Vanguard Overdress is about to kick off as set one is right around the corner. And with that, I think it's about time that we take a look at the most important cards from that set. These are the must-have cards from Genesis of the Five Greats. Stand up! Bangado! Hey car fighters, welcome back to another video and today we've got a brand new type of video which might or might not be turned into a brand new series depending if you guys are enjoying this type of content. So before the video starts, let me know in the comments down below what you think of this idea and definitely hit the like button if this is the type of video you want to see more often. Now the generic YouTuber out of the way that doesn't make any sense because I haven't even stated what this video is. Basically what we're doing in this type of video potential series is that we take a look at the brand new upcoming set and analyze which are the most important cards that you should get because either they are integral staples to the respective playstyle or they have a longevity or a lot of future potential with upcoming sets and that is probably the most important part here because with more and more sets going on in the future older cards will either be unaccessible or start to get very expensive so getting those staple cards as early on as possible and determining and localizing those particular cards as early on as possible is probably the best to interest for all you guys out there so this video series helps you guys to understand which type of cards will probably have more priority over others and which type of cards you should keep an eye on if you cannot afford them right now but you're interested in playing that particular playstyle now one thing i want to clarify before we delve into these cards no i'm not going to purely name every triple r and double r or any high rarity cards because obviously most of those cards are important for their respective playstyle this video isn't for players that already decided to play a certain deck or a playstyle because they probably already know which type of cards they're going to need to play that deck this video is mainly for players that either a don't want to play the nation right now but are interested in that specific nation so you probably are going to need certain specific staples if you're going to start playing the deck maybe in set two or set three then it's probably important to know which type of cards you're probably going to need from set one to have a basis once you're going to delve into the nation or two you cannot afford the entire deck right now so you want to know which type of cards are probably the highest priority to get if you're gonna play the deck later down the line with future support so with that explained let's delve straight into these cards that you're going to need and probably the number one cards that you're going to need or are probably the highest priority to get your hands on in set one are the five over triggers this is probably obvious that you're going to need these cards in every single deck every deck is going to use an over trigger or at the very least it's wisely to play at least one over trigger and the strongest over trigger that we've got for every single nation is the nation specific over trigger so if you're planning to play a certain nation get those over triggers right now from set one because bushrod already confirmed that they're not going to reprint these over triggers for at least a year so until set five potentially we're not going to see any more over triggers for their respective nations so get these ones while they last and while they're still affordable the second line of cars that you're going to need that are on the highest priority are the grade one perfect guards these are again the same situations as the over triggers they are going to be staples for every single nation and they're not going to be reprinted for at least a year at least or at the very least that is what's very likely going to happen now there are less of a priority because in most cases, the perfect guards that we're going to get from the starter decks are good enough. The extra bonus effect that you can potentially use the perfect guard without the discard can come up now and often, but not as much as you think. So if you cannot get them right now or they start to get too expensive if you want to play a new nation in the future, don't worry about them. You can get away with just running normal perfect cards from the starter deck. And finally, the generic cards that you're going to need or advise to get are the five main booster set right lines these are of course including the right line for eugene the right line for bear magnus as well as hexa orb sorceress also the right line for zorga and the right line for orifice if you are interested in playing any of these decks later down the line but you cannot get your hands on the entire deck i advise you to get the right line pieces as fast as possible because these decks all 10 right lines including the one from the starter decks are gonna get support in future sets so maybe the entire deck around the right lines will be replaced at some point maybe in set two or set three or a lot of pieces will be get re removed for other upgraded tools but the right lines themselves will probably stick for a long while so 
those are probably the most important cards to get out of set one if you're planning to play a specific right line or a specific nation in general now with those generic cards that probably were very obvious out of the way let's talk about some specific cards and we're gonna do it per nation and we're gonna start off with dragon empire now for dragon empire there aren't really a lot of staple cards that i would recommend getting out of them because most of the cards are very specific to their playstyle, and a lot of them are sadly very underwhelming because most of them are somewhat tailored to Eugene, but we know that the deck is kind of like Luster, and that's because most of the rearguards are pretty bad. But that said, I would recommend one of the most important cards to get for Dragon Empire is Verena Arcs. Yes, you might say Valiente, but I think Valiente is less future proof than Arcs, as Valiente looks more as a boss unit for the Overdress playstyle, and is seen as probably every single future main set is gonna get a new Verena form, it's probably very likely that Valiente will be the first one to get replaced outside of the normal Verena from the starter deck. Arcs, however, is probably gonna be a staple for a long while because it's the pot of greed for the archetype that negates the minuses of the overdress mechanic that it has inherently. It's such a powerful card that fixes a lot of issues for the overdress deck. But on top of it, Arcs is also playable in Eugene as there is a Eugene hybrid variant with the Overdress cards and probably Arx is the most important card within the build because yes you can play Valiente, yes you can play the Norm of Arena but just using Arx with Trickstar is a way to play this two card engine that can give any Dragon Empire build in the future just generic draw power. You use two cards from your hand, you get a board body onto the board so it's basically you go minus one to give him 50k attacker but you did draw two cards so it's effectively still a plus one in card economy. Yes you need to have two specific cards in, in, in your hand but it's very plausible that this draw engine is probably going to be the best draw engine that Dragon Empire is going to get for a couple of sets. So even if you aren't going to play the overdress deck Arcs is probably going to be a very powerful card nonetheless. And the other card that I would recommend for Dragon Empire is Stealth Dragon Tenja Stat. Now this isn't going to be as strong as any other card within your specific deck that you're going to play. But it's a very powerful card that could get a lot of future potential. The only issue that the card right now faces is that it costs a counter blast and it has an on hit effect. So your opponent has some leeway in how much value you're going to generate. But the fact that you can search out your Persona right target is still something you shouldn't overlook as this could be a big thing depending if we're going to get an archetype that relies on Persona writing in the future like we've seen for Magnolia for example. So Tenja Stat is probably another card that I would recommend to get a couple of copies of, maybe a playset, if you want to have a good solid foundation for Dragon Empire with potential future build and future support. Now whereas Dragon Empire doesn't have a lot of cards that I would suggest as must have, Dark States is a complete different story because Dark States has a lot of very powerful cards that are probably going to stay with them for a while. And one of those cards is Diabolus Boys Eden. This card is probably one of the most important cards within the Bruce build because not only is it a solid 15k attacker that restands and comes with a critical, thus meaning your multi tax comes with extra pressure, but it also has a solid on hit pressure that gives you field disruption. And it seems the deck doesn't really use a lot of counter blasts, you can easily get away with with using this effect maybe once or twice a game. And the fact that that on hit ability is an early game means this is a very flexible card that could potentially be used in a non bruise build as seen as that ability isn't restricted to the final rush keyword. So Boys Eden is a very interesting card, it's going to get a little bit better with the upcoming future support of the festival collection with the grade 2 that can empower Eden. So we already see support around Eden, especially with the latest reveal that we saw for the order card from set 2 that can give your entire front row plus 10k power, thus making Eden with the unhit and recent critical that more devastating. So Eden is definitely one of those cards that I would recommend to get as to get your playset as fast as possible. Now another card that's very important for the Violence Bruce Final Rush build is Upward Acrobat Marjorie. This is again a very powerful grade 3 that gives you a lot of value, it draws you card, it gives you soul, it's a solid attacker, it's 23k for bo potentially both attacks, so it can pressure for a a lot of power and shield so again it's a very good generic stable card that we'll probably see a lot of play even with future support as seen as it just gives you so much value just the fact that you can turn cards on the field into draw power into your hand so you can get power onto the board but also still retain shield value is still something very important especially with violence ruse that lacks the early game so it's very hard to see this card being power crept 
very soon it could happen but i think this is a card that we'll probably see play for at least a couple of sets down the line but a card that isn't going to be as powerful right now but definitely has a lot of future potential is team battler gun gunner ram now this card is really interesting because it generates soul but more importantly it's a draw engine on a body the fact that this card can just give you draw power whenever you want is really solid. Now currently it's not as effective as seen as we have a build that wants to soul blast 5 cards every single turn the moment it can find a rush. Or we have the build with Baron Magnus that just want to build up soul and not really soul blast it. So there's not really a lot of opportunity for this card to generate a lot of value. However... Depending on what type of build we're going to get in the future, the moment it's less on soul reliant, but it still can generate a lot of soul, this can be a very important card to just r generate raw value. So this is one of those cards that I think can definitely increase in value as the game progresses with future sets. Now, another card that I can see grow in future as well is Prada Bulb Dragon. This is a very interesting card that gives Bruce some type of toolbox as it turns the soul in that set toolbox that you can get any card into the soul and then into your hand. It can allow you to reuse persona rights. It allows you to potentially get triggers back into your hand that you accidentally soul charge, which can be the over trigger, which is 50k shield. So this card is very interesting. It opens up some extra plays and it can definitely become a lot better. Nowadays, it might be a bit awkward with Marjorie as well, as they both want to put cards into the soul. But maybe once Marjorie isn't as useful as we're going to get some better grade 3 attackers, or maybe mainly going to focus on grade 2s, then suddenly Protobulb can become a lot better as we're less removing our field in the process. Um, it's another one of those cards that I think you should keep an eye on, as it can definitely be a very nice card in the future as well. And then the final card for Dark Souls I would recommend that is a must-have is Cell is engraver this is a key card for the uh, for the Baron Magnus build as it allows you to clear your board which then can make room for your multi tags but the interesting thing about this card is that it's just a generic soul charge engine that on attack that on hit can generate soul can to some extent work with Bruce but more importantly it's a relatively generic counter charge engine as it generates counter blast once you reach the 10 soul but we see with Baron Magnus that it's very important for that build and it can definitely happen that with future new ride lines or boss units for dark states this could be even more important or more impactful as having a card like this that can clear the board but also generates resources is always a powerful card. There's a reason why Nabu for Gear Chronicle was a staple for a while. Like that card is somewhat of a staple for about two to three years for the clan and is still being used in premium to some extent. So seeing self as engraver. I can definitely say that this card will probably have a long future for itself as it's pretty generic. Now, which of the Graver that brings us to Cater Sanctuary? And for Cater Sanctuary, it's a bit of awkward here because a lot of the cards are pretty good, but they're very in the right now, right here moment as most of the great trees are good, but I can definitely see them being replaced. A good example is their triple R unit, Elden, which is really powerful, but I can definitely see the cards being moved out even potentially in set two because it has a big cost. It costs two counterblasts and a soul blast, which means it's somewhat restricted in usage if we're gonna get a card that just costs a counterblast, which maybe gives us a bit less, but because it only costs one counterblast, it's much flexible and much easier to use, which then can turn Elden into a card that's being moved out of the deck. But with it said, there are a couple of cards that I think have some longevity to it and potential usage with maybe a different playstyle. Or if they're going to go into a different direction with the support of Bastion or Hexal Orb Sorceress. And one of those cards is of course the double R grade 3 Knight of War Damage Fossado. This is just a really good uh, resource engine. It gives Counter Blast, it gives Soul Charge, which is really good. Yes, it's on, on hit, but that on hit is probably one of its strongest points. As it means that your opponent is going to block this card at all at all costs and you can easily power up this column with a big number so your opponent is forced to waste a lot of shield and because it can hit into a rear guard makes it even better because you're a bit more flexible even if your opponent gets a defensive trigger so this is going, probably going to be a card that can be used for a long while until we get better resource management that doesn't rely on hit but 
We don't know if we're gonna get that anytime soon, so probably this is our best bet right now. Another card that we've got is Divine Sister Lapisto. This is a great free, which is really flexible. Of course, it's a great free, which means it's good for Bastion, but it also works with Hexor or Sorceress because it works with drive checking a trigger. Now, the main thing why I think this card is really good and has more longevity to it is because this is a solid way to generate multi attacks in whatever playstyle you might play. It's a great free that can give you another attack. It becomes a bit stronger so you get more value out of those multi-tech as well even though they might get defensive trigger which means it's pretty good like giving any type of deck or build the potential of getting multi-techs is always inherently powerful yes it costs two counterblast but with the current card pool that we have there's actually enough room to use this skill maybe once or twice in a game as you can definitely play a build without relying on too much counterblast besides this particular card and with more future support for potentially sorcerers on the horizon it's very much likely that getting this condition off to by hitting a trigger will be easier and easier as the game progresses so that's why i think this is a very solid card that you should keep your eye on as i can definitely see this card becoming very important or very strong with future support and the final card that i would recommend for cater sanctuary that i think you should get at least get two copies of not necessarily place it but two copies is the great free normal order swinging swords of judgment this is basically just the generic removal spell for cater sanctuary and removal like this is always going to be powerful depending on the meta that we're going to see if you need to get rid of a pesky unit this is a great way to do it and not only is it one card it removes two yes the condition to need the soul blessed great free can be a bit awkward but we've seen with refluke that we we can fulfill that condition and depending on what future support we're going to get it might become even easier to fulfill this condition but overall having access to spot removal is always something that is nice to have especially if you're a nation that doesn't really revolve around removal now if we head over to stoikea we've got a couple of cards that are also very important for future builds and one of those cards is inheritance maiden hendrina now if you're gonna play the zorga build you're probably gonna pick this card up because it's probably the strongest cards in the build but if you cannot pick it up right now but you're but you want to play zorg in the future this is probably besides the right line of course the most important card to get your hand on the fact that this card allows you to negate the soul blast cost gives you a lot of value and even with future orders on the horizon this card keeps generating value turn after turn after turn so I advise you, if you're going to play Zorga or you're interested in playing Zorga, get this card as fast as possible because I can definitely see this card spike in value once we enter set 3 or set 4 at the end of this year and Zorga is going to be competitively viable at a high level and we're seeing more Soul Blasted costed order cards. So Inherited Maiden Hendrina should be on the top of your shopping list if you're going to shop for Zorga. Now another Flower Maiden or, or Neonectar type card for Stoikea that I would recommend is Spurring Maiden Alenia. And th this is basically a generic revival effect. The fact that you can get any card of your drop zone is very powerful but the fact that it's generic generic means that this can be used in any type of build so depending if you play magnolia or zorga this can be useful but it can also become useful in future builds so this is once again one of those cards that can definitely grow in future potential if we might see other play styles and getting access to your drop zone is another way to increase the consistency of your deck so again one of those cards that i would advise to get at least a couple of copies on but you have another alternative instead of this double or grade two you can also go for the grade one normal order spiritual body condensation these cards basically do the exact same thing they resurrect a card from the drop zone onto the field and they get 5k power the only difference is is that this card costs you a discard and a soul blast whereas the grade 2 costs a counter blast and a soul blast but for the grade 2 you also have the grade 2 on the board so you have another body so depending on what type of value you justify more you can either get the grade 2 double or or you can get this rare grade 1 there is no a better card between these two because both of them fulfill a different role and depending on your playstyle or your deck choice one is better than the other but if there's one card you should get for stoikea it's probably the grade 2 blitz order ghost chase this card is incredibly powerful super generic and can definitely become better and better as the game progresses as there's a lot of applications that to be had with here you can reuse perfect guards you can call triggers to the field even the over trigger if you need to superior call cards to the field from your right line with 
which we've seen with Magnolia, and you accidentally call a over trigger or a trigger, you can get those cards back into your hand. But more importantly, this card also allows you to reuse on place effects. So this is a Blitz Order that's very versatile, and it doesn't even force you to sacrifice shield value, as this card will generate 5k shield, which is similar to just having a grade 1 or a grade 2 in the first place. So this is an incredibly powerful Blitz Order, which is probably the strongest Blitz Order that we've seen so far for Vanguard Overdress. So if there's one card you should get for Stoikea if you're planning to play Stoikea, but you aren't really sure if you're gonna play Zorigo or Magnolia, then at the very least, get four copies of this order card as this could be very powerful even with future support. And with Ghost Chase that brings us to Brandgate and for Brandgate I have only one recommendation as a must-have card that you should get out of this set and that is Detonation Mutant Bulba Mine. This is a very powerful resource engine as it gives you soul as well as counterblast and it removes empty support a bit which synergizes nicely with uh, with both archetypes for Brandgate. But more importantly, the reason why this is the only card I would recommend is because all the other cards for Brandgate in this set are very specific to their respective playstyle. So if you're going to play the prison deck, you already know what you're going to get. You get a triple R, you get all the prison support. But if you're going to play Orphis, you're going to get all the Orphis support cards. So I, there's nothing really to recommend. The only cards that I would advise to get before everything else are the right lines, the overtrigger, and the perfect cards. Besides that, I advise to get this card as this is going to be generically good but it's also good for both builds but besides that you can get the rest of the pieces which most of them are just commons and rares now for the prison deck you have the triple r card which is pretty solid but i'm gonna be very honest with you guys that card isn't really a staple in my mind as i can definitely see that grade 2 being replaced coming set too as it's basically a 15k attacker that can be a 15k shield but in most times it probably won't be a 15k shield as your opponent can shut it off and the fact that it can solve this one to imprison something on place we've seen that on other cards so that's not as powerful as a triple r would warrant it it's just higher numbers over every other card it's nice but it's definitely something that can be replaced with more utility options or just better cards in general. And with that, that concludes the, all the must-have cards to my recommendation for set 1. Now, as I explained at the beginning of this video, this doesn't include every single card you should have. Because if you're going to play a specific playstyle and you know which deck you're going to play. Let's say, for example, you want to play Overdress. Yes, you should get Valiente. Yes, you should also get Var Arcs. And yes, you should get the 10k booster and all those other jazz. But if you're already decided to play Overdress, the Overdress deck, then you already know what you're going to get. This is mainly for players out there that aren't sure what they want to get, but they have an inclination of what nation they want to play, or maybe you're interested in a nation, then these are recommendations that I gave to you guys to say, hey, get at least look at these cards and maybe get these cards as fast as possible when they're still cheap because you might need to use them in a couple of months later down the line and then suddenly they aren't a couple of bucks but suddenly 10 to 20 a piece but that said if you guys enjoy this type of video and you want to see me do this for every single set in the future let me know in the comments down below and of course like hit the like button and of course and if you haven't subscribed subscribe to the channel because that will notify me that you guys enjoy this content and i will definitely do this more often with future sets but with the said thank you for watching and of course this video has been brought to you by our lovely patrons over at patreon.com slash finger insider you guys guys are amazing if you want to support channel or everything that's happening on the channel you can simply go to patreon.com slash insider and become a patron today but that said i'm mr time leap and i'll see you guys in the next one